hey, GED students, let's go ahead and play with some algebraic reasoning skills. Now, good news, you're not going to see anything just like this on the test. So you might say, Kate, why are we doing this? Uh, the point of doing this is to kind of build up your reasoning skills so that when we do come to algebra in the next chapter, you have that really strong foundation of this kind of backwards thinking. Okay, so fair warning, there's not one right way to do any of these problems. But whatever way you get your answer, I highly suggest you check it. So let's go ahead and take a look at A. So, well, first let's read the problem. How about that? What number should replace each question mark to make a true statement? So taking a look at A, I have this question mark right here. There's some number that if I put it in there, this whole expression here on the left will simplify to this really short, easy expression or number on the right. Um, and so I'm just trying to find out what number that would be. Okay, so let's get my expression out here. 43 minus 5 times some number. And I'm looking for the whole thing to get me to 23. So one thing that I do know is if I was following the order of operations, I'd have to do this piece first. I would have to do five times some number and then take that away from 43. Well, if I'm looking for 43 minus this whole thing, this whole thing to equal 23, I can think about what that whole thing would have to equal in order to get me 23. Let's think about it. So if I was at 43 and I wanted to go down some amount, uh, 43 to 33 would be 10. And then 33 to 23 would be another 10. So we're looking at 10, 20. So I need this whole thing, this five times something to equal 20. Okay, now I've really narrowed it down now because now all I need to know is five times what equals 20. So five times what equals 20? Um, let's see, let's count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20. Five times four equals 20. So what number would have to replace that question mark in order to get that entire expression to equal 23? Well, it looks like from my reasoning, it would have to be four, okay? But let's remember that, you know, I'm an algebra teacher. I'm pretty proficient at algebraic reasoning and working backwards, so that made sense to me. You might struggle a little more. So I highly, highly suggest that whatever answer you think it is, whatever answer you guess, let's go back and check, okay? So if I was following the order of operations here, I'd have to simplify the multiplication first. So 5 times 4 is 20. Drop everything I haven't used. And of course, 43 minus 20 would give me 23. And so A checks out. Correct answers for. Woo! Okay, that's a lot of work. Let's try the next one. So there's a number that if I square it and take away 5, I'll get 44. Again, according to the order of operations, I would have to do this piece first. So this piece would give me some number, okay? So let's think about what that whole piece, that whole question squared would have to give me if I want to take away 5 and get 44, okay? So if I took away 5 and got 44, I'd be up higher than 44, okay? So where would I be at? And let's see, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. I'd have to have 49 minus 5 to get 44, Okay, so that means this piece, this question mark squared, has got to equal 49. So there's a number that if I square it, I get 49. And what number is that? Of course, that number is 7. Okay, so again, I did some reasoning, some puzzling to try to get to it. So, but now I should check my work. Let's see if 7 squared minus 5 really does give us 44. So 7 squared I would do first because according to the order of operations, exponents come before addition, subtraction. So 4 squared is 49 minus 5. That really would give me 44. That totally checks out. The number that would have to replace the question mark is 7. Ooh. Okay, next one. There is a number that if I square root it and take it away from 10, I'm going to get 4. Again, let's think about the order of operations. The order of operations would have us doing any exponents, including square roots, before subtraction. Okay, so let's think about just what that piece, that square root of a number would have to equal to. So 10 minus what would equal 4? 10 minus what would equal 4? Well, if I had 10, I'd have to take away 6 to equal 4. So I'm looking for a number 
that if I square root it, a number that if I square root it, I would get six. Now, a lot of students would tell me, Kate, that's not a perfect square. Careful, I'm going the opposite direction. I'm not looking to square six. I'm asking myself, what number if I square rooted it would give me six? Well, of course, that's 36. If you square root 36, you get six. Now, well, I just broke my own rule. Let's go ahead and, and check. So let's imagine we did replace that question mark in this original expression with 36. Would it give me four? Okay, according to the order of operations, do the square root first. Square root of 36 is six, and 10 minus six is four. That checks, yay. Correct answer to C is 36. Ooh, tricky, tricky, tricky. Next one, 17 minus three times a number equals eight. Now, once again, we had to think about that order of operations. If I was simplifying this expression, I would have to do this piece first. So it would be 17 take away that entire piece, okay? So 17 take away what would give me 8, okay? Uh, I would have to have 17 taking away, let's see, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. I'm counting with my fingers, by the way, you guys. 11, 10, 9, 8. Oh, that'd have to be 17 take away 9, Okay, so I need a number that if I multiply it by three, I get nine. So three times what number would give me nine? And of course, that's three. Three times three is equal to nine, right? So once again, once again, guessing is a perfectly legitimate math strategy, but it's not just guess, it's guess and check. Let's imagine if we replaced that question mark with the three, what would happen? So three times three is nine. Taking that away from 17, yep, I sure would get eight. This checks out, correct answer is three. Three would have to replace that question mark. Woo, okay, halfway there. Let's take a look at the next one. I want the square root of something minus 14 to equal one. Now, if I were following the order of operations to simplify this, I'd have to do the inside of this grouping first. Okay, and so think about what I want. I want something that if I took the square root of it, that whole thing would give me one. Well, that's easy. You know, it's the square root of one that would give me one. So I need something that if I took a number minus 14 would give me one. A number, my, well, I just need to be one bigger, huh? So it should be 15. Now let's take a look if we plug that in. So the square root of, replace that equal sign with a 15 minus 14. Let's see what happens. So inner first, 15 minus 14 gives me one. And square root of one indeed would give me one. That checks out. What number would have to replace the question mark? 15. All righty, next one. Oh man, we need some room. We're doing good work. Uh, let's come up here. So seven plus some number over seven would give me 10. Okay, again, order of operations would have us simplifying this piece first. So it's seven plus some big number I would simplify, some number I would simplify. So let's think about that. What would I have to have this whole piece equal to to get 10? Well, it'd be seven plus three would equal 10, right? So that means I need this whole piece to come to three. So there's a number that if I divide it by seven, I'd get three. And what number is that? What number divided by seven equals three? That's 21. And so this guy is 21. Oh man, that was getting messy, you guys. Okay, so 21 for F. Now let's take a look at G. So G seems a little simpler. There is a number that if I cube root it, I will get five. Now this cube root can come up on the non-calculator section and it freaks a lot of students out, but I want you not to freak because remember it's the opposite of cubing. So what I'm saying here is that flip it around now, okay? That five, if I cube it, will give me this mystery number, right? Because I wanna take the cube root of this mystery number and get five, that answer five, it's five that would have to get cubed. So this is way easier than it seems. So remember, cubed means to multiply a number by itself. So don't tell me 15, you guys. So uh, it's not five times three, it's five times itself, five, three times. So five times five is 25. Multiplying that again by five, and you guys, 
you can all count by 25s because you've all had quarters in your pockets, okay? So 25, 50, 75, 100, 125. So the cube root of what number? 125 would equal 5. I'm asking what number times itself 3 times would equal 125, okay? So number that would have to replace the question mark. Whew, 125. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Okay, next one, a little bit of exponent with algebraic reasoning. Reasoning. I'm saying two to what power equals eight, okay? Again, a lot of students wanna tell me four. They're like, Kate, it's four. Okay, and that's when guessing and checking becomes real important because two to the four po fourth power means two times two times two times two. And guys, two times two is four. But so is this two times two, and four times four is 16. You just went too large. You just went too large, so let's back it up. We know it's not two squared, right? We know it's not two to the second power, because two times two is only four. So let's go in between those, and let's try two to the third power. Okay, two to the third power means two times two times two. Of course, two times two is four, and if I multiply that by two again, I do get eight. That checks out. The number that would have to replace my question mark is three. All right, guys, that again was just a gym trip. Okay. All we did was go to the gym and build muscle to prep us for algebra. This is not some step-by-step uh, -step process you have to remember for the test. This is not the style of problem that you have to do for the test. It's just straight up getting you to kind of start thinking backwards, checking your work, and getting this idea of what an equal sign means, that it makes a sentence, the left is equal to the right, okay? So we just went to the gym. Do you feel all sweaty and sore? I bet you do. Yeah, you should uh, go, go stretch. Take a shower, you guys. <laughs> all right. Happy learning.